four games remain, three of them on the road, three of them against teams with winning records. And wow, the scope of this from the franchise perspective is really, really something. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates, the same place that you found this, and I hope you'll check those out as well. Steelers versus Colts Saturday in Indianapolis. That's a 4.30 p.m. kickoff. Both these teams are 7-6. and six. The Steelers would win the tiebreaker against the Colts if you're into that sort of thing a month out for the sixth playoff spot in the AFC if the season were to end today. But fortunately for all of us, it doesn't. Because over this final stretch, I think we're going to see so many different facets of this franchise exposed Maybe for the better, maybe for the worse. But we're going to know a lot. And we're going to know a lot, I think, definitively. Now, not everyone's going to agree with me on that because maybe the first thing that pops to mind is, do you or do you not have a potential starting quarterback in the house? Do you believe in Kenny Pickett? Does can he come back in time to make enough of a difference in one direction or the other? Do you believe in Mitch Trubisky? I think we know the answer to that already. Do you believe in the offense or even just the offensive line is currently constructed? Do you believe in this group of wide receivers? And if you do, then why? Because they're not showing you much either. Me, I believe in two individuals on the offense. And I'll stop with those two individuals. That would be Pat Fryermuth and Jalen Warren. End of discussion. I'd love to fully cement my belief in Broderick Jones over the next month. And I'll offer a tip of the cap to James Daniels. And otherwise, that's all I've got on the offense. But really, this whole thing's going to come down to whether or not you've seen enough of any of these quarterbacks to proceed with the status quo. And that is a massive decision unto itself. On the defensive side, I don't even know where to start. The obvious is whether or not Cam Hayward comes back for another season. This has obviously been a rough one for him. But beyond that, you're looking toward yet another offseason of trying to plug holes up the middle and at the front. All of the inside linebackers Most of the defensive linemen, a lot of the secondary around Minka Fitzpatrick and Joey Porter Jr. But here again, imagine how much more we're going to know because these won't be the Cardinals and the Patriots they're facing. They're not necessarily powerhouses, but they're teams that can score, that have scored, and won't be considered complete flukes if and when they do score against Pittsburgh as the previous two opponents were. These are going to be bigger tests, and that's good because it's going to bring bigger, clearer results. And then there's, you know, the head coach, which could and would change everything about football operations, including possibly a big, big chunk of the roster. If Mike Tomlin's not around, regardless of how that comes about or how it's portrayed in the public, if he's not around, it can't be overstated the impact that it'd have on the entire organization and everything they do from scouting and drafting and developing and everything, everything. And I suppose I could say something that's dramatic sounding here like, Tomlin would be fighting for his job over these final four games. I I don't believe that in the moment because I don't believe that's something that Art Rooney, based on his personality, would have predetermined in the moment. But it's no longer unthinkable. If the remainder of this season goes 
the way realistically it probably ought to go with how the Steelers have been performing of late. Wow. I mean, where do you, where do you run and hide from that? You know, Tomlin was asked yesterday at his press conference if the team as a whole can still find some energy in the fact that I mean, they're seven and six and they are sitting in that playoff spot. This was his response. I think our guys understand that. I'm not necessarily looking for positive messages in an effort to to, to build them up. Um, I'm probably taking the opposite approach and talking about how urgent, you know, these weeks and opportunities and games are um, because the road is getting narrow. It's a phrase that we like to use, and and um, we're moving into the middle of December now, and so um, that's just a, acknowledging truth. Um, opportunities to establish your position. Um, these games are big. This one's big, big for us and big for them. You know, he wasn't about to use Unleash Hell in December again, but that's the mindset, and he's done that year after year. And a handful of those years, it really worked. Another handful, it didn't. But that's the mission right now. That's the outlook. It's the get this team to the playoffs. I can't get inside the man's head. I'm not going to try to. I don't know if he's looking at this from a standpoint of, wow, I can't after all these years, after 17 years, go getting fired. If I get into the playoffs, nobody's firing me. I can't wonder if it's just, you know, some pure motivation. You know, I love these players. I want to get them as far as they can go. I want to give everything I've got. I believe in the group, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's that, okay? Again, I'm not omniscient here. But I do believe that there's a collective common urgency here. Or if there isn't, we'll also learn a whole lot more about that. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Today's J1Q comes from Brian who asked, hi DK, isn't it a bit unrealistic for us to expect much from this offense while they're still using the Matt Canada playbook, which is likely full of poorly designed plays? To an extent, Brian, yes. The number of players who will cite it as an excuse, either on the record, off the record, in any capacity, is zero. At least per my communications with them. I haven't heard anyone suggest that the plays are an issue. In fact, quite the contrary. What I've heard is we've picked out the plays that we like. We've picked out the plays that we're confident that we can deliver. And now it's on us. And I'll repeat that I'm hearing that in all forms, not just whenever they're faced with cameras and microphones. They believe this. And when things haven't gone well offensively, they have squarely blamed themselves. Now, if you want to get into what actually has gone wrong, it certainly went wrong against both the Cardinals and the Patriots. We're talking about two things. One, everyone's sick of hearing this, but that doesn't make it any less true, is execution. If you see a play that's made, or play that should be made, and it isn't made, guess who that's on? I mean, a hundred times out of a hundred, It's on the players, and some of that has to do, of course, with having Mitch Trubisky go in there cold. Mike Tomlin brought up himself in his press conference yesterday that he feels that Mitch is getting better the longer he's in, and he would understand how it would take a little bit of time for Mitch to feel like he's all the way in command of the offense. Take from that what you will. I'm not endorsing it or whatever, just sharing. But when I see... Dan Moore repeatedly whiffing on blocks on the left side. I see the pocket collapsing. 
I see wide receivers not getting open. That happens a lot. and It does not show up on television, my friends. You're going to have to trust me that it's happening or get yourself some All-22 film and study from overhead if you're really geeky about this stuff. But you'll see what I'm seeing then. But none of that has anything to do with lousy decisions. Throwing a bomb on fourth and two with the game on the line is one of the dumbest things you'll ever see. And whether that came from Eddie Faulkner or Mike Sullivan or just cleared through Tomlin's headsets or whatever, I couldn't care less. It's the dumbest thing you'll ever see in that situation. When your football team has two minutes left on the clock, they need to pick up another 15, 16 yards to get in field goal range when they're down three points. That's just plain dumb. And it's got nothing to do with Canada's playbook. And continuing on the dumb component, you find yourself what looks like a really significant solution, partial solution, but a really significant one in Pat Fryermuth making those nine catches in Cincinnati. And I understand the Bengals weren't great at defending the tight end and they left the middle of the field open and the Steelers took what was given. But to go from that to barely utilizing him? Dumb. Okay, so like I said, there was two things here. There's execution and then there's dumb. And the dumb might actually outweigh the execution. And neither have anything to do with the Canada playbook, which has more than enough pickings. It's like going to a, if you go to a really, really good salad bar, like the salad bars they have at steakhouses, okay, or Brazilian steakhouse, one of those really good ones. I love going to these places, by the way. I don't do it like maybe once every three months, but I love it. And you look at the salad bar and you go, you know, About 80% of this is stuff I'd never eat, but man, that 20, (laughs) I'm diving headfirst into that. There's enough there. There's more than enough there that'll function, but you got to execute it and you can't be dumb. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 